All right, yo guys, what up? Squanto here. Um, it's time for my first official production tutorial video. Um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about a little bit about synthesis today. I think, uh, you know, I'll start an operator. I was planning on doing serum up until about five seconds ago, but I have it open right here, so I'm just going to uh, go for it. Operator is a uh, it's one of the stock Ableton synths. It's very powerful. It's what I was using as my main bass synth for quite a while. I still use it pretty often now, even though I'm mostly in Serum. But um, I'm just gonna use this opportunity to give you guys a little introduction to FM synthesis if um, you're not already familiar with it, or maybe you are and you wanna learn some new techniques. Maybe you've used FM8 or Citrus and wanna check out Operator or whatever. We're gonna check it out. All right, here it is. Um, all right, so stock patch, just a sine wave. So the general idea with FM synthesis is that you can have any number of oscillators. Operator is limited to four. FM8 can do more, around eight, I think, as the name suggests. Um, so it's different than additive synthesis. Operator can do all, th these are all different oscillator configurations. This is additive. Um, when they're s next to each other, it implies that they're each outputting separately. And when they're on top of each other, it means that this one is FM and this one. So here you have all additive. <laughs> We're just adding these different um, sine waves together. So if we look at it on the spectrum, fundamental, second one, third one. So you know, just straight adding the frequencies together. Now, when we go into FM synthesis, that stands for frequency modulation. So what happens is that instead of the sounds adding together, there is some complex algorithmic mathematical business and um, the sounds actually kind of multiply, so check this out. So you can see when we bring the second oscillator in, it, does, it doesn't bring in just one harmonic, it brings in several. So um, let's explore this a little bit. The thing with FM synthesis, it's very sensitive, and it can be... Um, a really a trial and error process to get sweet sounding patches, but I'll just sort of, I'm, I'm not going to talk a whole lot, I'm just going to kind of go through and make patches right now so you guys can see how I work with this. That one's quite nice. I like that a lot. Um, one strategy. Um, it's good to sort of have an internal process when you're working with synthesis like this. Synthesis like this. Synthesis like this. It's a little tongue twister. Um, so yeah, you can totally just... I mean, this. Ha everyone's got to start by blindly mashing and getting a feel for the parameters. But um, when I'm doing FM synthesis like, that, like this, I tend to visualize it, kind of. So... Um, whatever works for you, but I sort of like to picture the harmonic content in my head, and then what the more you work with it, you get a feel for how the ratios interact with each other. This is the ratios right here. It's just the, the pitch of the oscillator. It doesn't really, like, you can't really describe the relationship. You just get a feel for it. So um, a lot of times I'll start with, a, like, a one, like the, the root note. And then I'll go a higher ratio right here, and this sounds pretty whack in and of itself. But then once you bring in the third oscillator, it can really, it, 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 it has so much different potential, you know? You can go higher up here and get sort of a more of a gritty thing, but then if you do a 0.5 here or a 1, it can sort of really tie it up and kind of bring it back to that lower mid-range growl place. So I might not have been vocalizing um, that process in the most effective way, but hopefully that um, 
was communicated to you relatively effectively. Now, what we've been doing here is just straight 4 oscillator FM synthesis without drawing in harmonics. Now, that is one of my favorite features in Operator. Um, let's just open up a new one here. New track. New Operator. Usually when I'm working in Operator, the first thing I do is bring the volume up to zero. So I have a little bit more, um, you know, volume to hear what I'm working with here. So we've been on the envelope tab here. Now, oh, real quick. Envelopes can be a sweet way to add movement into your patch without um, automating the knobs, so check this out. That's freaking cool. Look, look at the look at the uh, spectrum here. Some really cool harmonic movement. Okay, that sounded a little gross. But yeah, you get the idea. The envelopes can be very, very powerful. Um, another one of my favorite things to do with Operator in Ableton, because it is a native Ableton plugin, it is integrated very, very nicely with the with the macro feature. So, um, you know, you just... You know, so, you, so sometimes sometimes when you get high, when you start... Um, get high, well... Um, when, you, when you put the oscillator volumes higher up, you get a lot of noise, and there's kind of like a sweet spot for your oscillator volumes, especially if you're going for a very specific sound in your patch, and you want your macros to be easy, like, oh... You, you don't want to be like, oh, I went to, I, I put the volume too high right there. It sounds really noisy and grainy. So what you can do, you know, you find your sweet spot, and then you adjust the macro in Ableton to, to be working within that sweet spot. Very powerful. You can map multiple volume knobs to one macro. You can map the ratio. The ratios can also have similar sweet spots. So you know that, for instance, like, your, your B oscillator sounds really good anywhere from 10 to 25, but outside of that, it sounds whack, so then you can just map your ratio to one macro and set the range from 10 to 25, and you're kind of set. So you sort of, you know, find your ratios, find the basis of the patch, and then you can map your sweet spots, if you will, to macros, and then you can kind of really dial in that patch and make it really easy to use, you know. Once I'm done with my base patches, I have my bases folder here, you know, operator tut base. You just drag it in, saves everything. You got your macros, you got your patch, you got any processing you do after it. So, um, real quick, we got a couple minutes left here. I'll go over making an operator base using the uh, waveform. So you click from the envelope tab to the oscillator tab. And then you can draw in your harmonics. So this just gives you a lot more flexibility with um, how you can make your patches. It gives you a lot more flexibility with the level of meatiness you can create, you know, it's just, uh, it's more possibilities, more, more ways to make wubs. One thing I will say about this technique, it is very easy to generate a lot of noise and aliasing. On that last patch we were doing, that was all just sine waves, so we're just doing straight fundamentals multiplying each other, classic FM synthesis. With this, it's a little bit more complex, and you have to be a lot more careful with um, how much noise you generate. Alright guys, that's about it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can gain and apply some information and techniques from this video. Uh, one thing I'll never do with these is give out the patches. I really encourage you guys to learn this process for yourselves and use it to create your own patches. 
But um, yeah, stay locked. Till next time.